Hey everyone, home stretch now for your HSC maths exams. And time and time again, uh, I see students make these mistakes that cost them so dearly in exams, but can be so easily fixed. Um, these are a couple that I've found. Let's get into it. And for those of you who stick around to the end, I've got a bonus tip um, that I found when I was going through the HSC marking comments. Uh, it was probably one of the strangest mistakes that I'd seen, but stick around to the end and I'll talk about it. Reading the question. Uh, it seems like a pretty obvious one, uh, but let me give you a, a specific example. There's three different questions here, and they're all asking for you to do three different things. Pause the video and think about how are each of these questions different. When you're asking to simplify something, that's when you're trying to collect like terms or divide through things. When I'm trying to factorize, that's when I use any of my factorizing methods. So it could be a quadratic, I might have to use difference of two squares, or it could be one of those cubic factorizations that you learned in year 11. And solving, well that's when you're trying to find a value for x. The tricky thing though is that sometimes those simplifying and those solving questions are going to incorporate factorizing it in some way regardless. So when you're approaching these questions, just be aware of what the questions actually ask me to do. It's very common to see papers where the questions ask students to factorize or simplify and they've added on an equal zero there thinking that they're trying to solve for some reason. Now in year 12, uh, we introduced you a new kind of measure for angles and that was called radians. And students are pretty good at remembering that pi is equal to 180 degrees and 2 pi is equal to 360 degrees. What they're not so good at is converting from radians to degrees and degrees to radians. And to be fair, in the heat of the exam, uh, in the moment, it can be a bit tricky to remember and, and get muddled up because they're quite similar. When you want to convert from radians to degrees, you want to multiply by 180 divided by pi. When you want to go the other way and go from degrees to radians, you need to multiply by pi on 180. How do you remember which one's for which? The easiest way for me to remember is to go back to those definitions. Right? Because when you're trying to convert from radians to degrees, you're trying to remove that pi. And vice versa, if I'm going from degrees to radians, I'm trying to introduce a pi and leave my answer in terms of pi. And as always, if you're confused or you're not too sure still, check with the ones that you already know. Pi is equal to 180 degrees and 2 pi is equal to 360 degrees. When you put that through your conversion, you should end up uh, with either of those, whichever way you're doing it. Now when we're answering questions, uh, again, it can be confusing about when do we use radians and when do we use degrees. The general rule of thumb is if you're given radians, just work with radians. If you're given with degrees, just work with degrees. Uh, for example, two questions here, both asking things related to uh, parts of a circle. The first one's given to you in radians, and so I suggest that you work with radians. As a note, for your formulas using circular measure, those actually need to be in radians, so just be careful of that. Similarly with this question, when you're trying to find the area of the triangle, right, they've given you that angle in degrees, so I would do that working in degrees there. Just a word of caution, uh, when we're working with trigonometric calculus, so our differentiation or what relevant for you guys, our integration with those bounds there, uh, we're always working in radians. And you should already have a bit of a hint because those numbers are often written in, in terms of pi. Uh, but the reason for that is if you think back to how trigonometric calculus was introduced, well, we had to be working in that number plane, right? And that x-axis there, that has to be in terms of well, numbers, not just an arbitrary choice of degrees. So anytime you're working with calculus and trigonometry, uh, you have to be working with uh, radians. Not testing stationary points or inflection points. Uh, I can't tell you the countless number of times I've uh, looked in an exam paper where students have you know, confidently proclaimed that this is a maximum or this is a minimum, but they haven't tested using a table of values or the uh, second derivative method there. Uh, it's really important that we're testing those values, not only because they're actually worth marks in the exam, but also when we're trying to do uh, more trickier questions like curve sketching, that's actually going to affect the graph that we create. For example, this question here. Now uh, we're asked to find the coordinates of stationary points and determine their nature. And for this one, it's really important that we test it so that we know what the graph is going to look like. All right, here's a bonus tip for those of you guys who stuck around. Now, when I was uh, reading the HSC marking comments, which is essentially something they put out after the exams each year for some of the most common mistakes, uh, when I was reading this, I was a bit confused because there was one comment uh, for this question. And it's an exponential growth question. It wasn't something regarding, you know, uh, confusing which way the graph goes or 
uh, the processes necessarily, but there was one comment that caught my eye, and it was that students, when they saw this number here, 200 million, they weren't able to write it in terms of a number. Um, just for the record, a million has six zeros, so if I want to have 200 million, I need to write the number 200 and then six zeros after that. If you want to see how I actually solve this question, click on the video over there. And it's just simple things like that, a little arithmetic things that might catch you out. Another thing that I see a lot of the time is uh, significant figures. Students are so used to uh, rounding to decimal places that after a while they've kind of forgotten all the rules to significant figures. And that can be an easy mark loss there, uh, for something that's so easy to prepare for. So there you have it. Uh, those are some of the most common mistakes that I see uh, in two unit students. Uh, they can cost you so dearly, but can be corrected so easily. Um, so all the best for your HEC exams, smash them out.